Now I just got on him and he sat down and he kind of walked off to the side. So I'm just going to hold his head to the side. First thing I do when I get on every horse, I want them to know I control speed and direction. He didn't really wait for me to tell him to go. So I'm going to sit up here and wait for him to stop and then I'll reward him for stopping. I'm just going to sit here. Good boy. And wait on him. Now let's go to the right. Again, he walked off without me asking. I'm going to bend him to the right and wait for him to stop. What I'm doing here is I'm waiting for his brain to kind of click back to me. He come out here this morning. It's a little cooler today than what it's been. We're supposed to have a front coming through. I'm sure it's Seems like it's got all the horses just a little bit kind of more alert. And I brought him out here and his mind is bouncing all over looking around and it's just not waiting on me for me to tell him what to do. And you notice I'm not really pulling on him. I'm not doing anything to stop, but I'm also not doing anything to go, which is the big key. I want him to wait for me his mind needs to come back to me and say, okay, what do you want me to do? What are you asking me to do? You notice when we walked to the left, we got stopped. And as soon as we got stopped, he walked off again. This time we got stopped and his mind was back on me. And now his ears is looking around, but he's not going anywhere. Now he's more cued into, okay, what do I want him to do? So now I'm going to ask him to go forward. I don't know why they're all looking that way this morning. But we're going to go forward. We're going to go back to the right again, which is, let's go forward. Then this time, since I asked him to go, I'm going to use my legs. I'm going to ask him to go. I'm going to ride with my body, ride with my legs. I'm going to be a rider. Before, I was just being a passenger. Real important that you think about the difference between being a rider and being a passenger. You're just sitting up here not telling the horse anything, not moving with the horse. You're a passenger. I'm being a rider. I am telling him to go. I'm asking him to get his mind on me. And we're going to go forward. We're going to move his feet. Think about me. Because his mind is not, his mind is not enough on me. What do, am I asking him to do? So let's go forward. Let's go forward. Let's go forward. I have spurs on, but I'm not using them. I'm just bumping in with my calves. Let's go forward. Let's go forward. 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 Let's ask for a trot. Put his mind to work. Now, when I got on, I said, I want to control what direction we go in and how fast we get there. I want their mind on me. When their mind is on me, then you're not going to get into near the number of accidents that you would get into if you're just letting the horse's mind drift around. Talk to a lot of people with a lot of problems with their horse and that is really the root of their problems. They're not being the leader, they're being a passenger, they're getting on the horse's back and not really telling the horse anything they think they are. They're pointing their nose in a direction and now use their body to say go forward, but they're not being a rider. They're not riding every step like dancing with your dance partner. I want to be dancing together with your dance partner. Now let's ask him to try it a little faster, make it a little bit of work. He wants to have a really slow pleasure trot. There we go. Yeah. 
Now, one of the things that I've been working on with this horse is getting him to travel a little better. He doesn't really travel that great. He's straight legged in the back, a little bit post legged, and he doesn't bend his hocks and his stifles really good when he travels. There's all kinds of ways that people come up to work with. You can work poles, which is pretty effective if you're riding English. Because if you're riding English, you're typically going to do some sort of grid work. Where a lot of Western riders, what they do is they go to trotting up, up and down hills, which can work, but the problem with that is it doesn't really transfer into when you're riding on flat ground. You're not building in a cue to teach the horse to pick his back up and move his hocks. So what I like to do, I like to work in on flat ground. I like to ask the horse to push out some. Ask him to use his back end a little bit better. Let's try it out again. Use his back end a little better. You don't really know what to do with it. He's had, or he feels like he's had a few months of pleasure training. And that's what he's trying to go back to is the training that he knows. I'm asking him to go a little faster so that he'll bend his legs a little better, use his hocks, use his stifles. It's gonna be better for him in the long run. And it's also gonna get him to move better. Let's talk a little bit about, I said it'd be better for him in the long run. Let's talk about why. If that back foot is coming forward and it's traveling straight and it's hitting the ground shape straight, then his stifles and his hocks is going to take a lot of the concussion of moving. And post-legged horses tend to have some trouble with their stifles and their hocks because of moving that way. But by getting him to try to bend his leg more, reach further under him, use those hocks and stifles better, He'll bend them better, and he'll be less likely to have a problem later. Go a little faster. When I ask him to go faster, he don't really know how to move faster. He moves kind of pleasure in the front, halter in the back. I need that back to catch up move better and match up there we go ask him to go this way ask for a little bit of a lope too Let's work this a minute. He's trying to transition to a lope. I feel his body getting really stiff. Let's work this trot a little bit.
He's getting slower. I've got to work harder just to keep him in that speed. That's for a lope again. Come on. Notice how I'm staying soft on his hands. Not really asking him to bridle up. And the reason is I'm asking his back to push. It takes two parts to create movement. Let's do that again. It takes two parts to create movement. I have to have push in the back end. I have to have lift and round us in the front end. Right now, just want to develop push. As I develop push, some of that lift and roundness is going to come on its own. Part of his issue before he came was whoever had him previously worked a lot on the front end and not enough on the back end. So we're going to keep moving him out more, asking the back end to push. I rarely work the back end and the front end in the same exercise. You've seen me in the last video pushing the shoulders over, getting counter bend, getting leg yield, asking the front end to move over like that. And that has come along a little bit. It could be softer, it could be better, but he made progress there. So now I need the back end to kind of catch up and make progress. That's why I rarely work both ends together. If I work the back end one day and then I work the front end the next day, I still work the front end some, or the back end some because we're moving forward, but it gives a little bit of a break. It gives it time to recover. And that way I feel like I can make better progress working it that way, where if I work both the front end and the back end in the same day, it doesn't go as good the next day on either part. So this is pretty. I'll put a link up here to the other videos that I've done of him on YouTube. Until next time, thank you for watching.